look shattered and grieve. See the devil wanna scatter and deceive. And God's no love, he'll leave you battered to bleed. Every day getting sadder, we need the love of Jesus Christ instead of another platter of weed. I pray the Lord has mercy on my soul. Sometimes I find me climbing up the ladder of greed. Trying to get my school right, but the Lord said I'll be more blessed if I go ahead and scatter my seed. So I'm trying to do everything he tells me instead of saying that it really don't matter to me. Hello, my name is Junior Munoz and I'm from ThugExposed.org and we're here today out here in uh, Freedom Missionary Baptist Church. We're out here on uh, 40th in Naomi. We're here today to give a presentation and uh, to bring the gospel into this area. You know, and on top of that, what we want to do here is really to uh, specify what God can do in people's lives. We're uh, here and uh, we're going to go over here and talk to these guys, see what they have to say. Excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> yes, uh, this is Scott Allen, and uh, he's from ThugExposed.org too. This is Robert Jimenez. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Lord bless you. That we're here. Uh, what, do you, what, what do you think that we should expect today, as far as what God is going to do here? We know He's going to move tremendously, but uh, we're right now, as I was telling the people, that we're right here at Freedom Baptist Church on the middle of uh, 40th and Naomi, and this is South Central. So today, what are you going to speak about? Uh, I'm just going to speak on the works of Satan. Uh, the, this ministry is about exposing the work of Satan, and um, I'm just going to speak on uh, Matthew 4, about what Satan offers everybody, but delivers nothing. So that's that's basically what my message is today to the people. And I, I expect that God's going to do a great work here today and just maybe change some lives. So you think I could get you to give your testimony out there? Sure. Hey man, that's good. Absolutely. Robert, hey, Robert. Hey, man. Yeah, I would, I, I'm excited. I know that God's going to do something good here. You know, I've come out here this Sunday afternoon and um, and you know when you just want to spend your time reaching out to others, God gives you blessings. So I'm looking forward to the Lord just blessing me this afternoon. Looking forward to the people popping in here at Freedom Baptist. I know that this is a special guest appearance here at this location. So there's a lot of the people in the area that are kind of wanting to just come and check it out. And I'm just dependent totally on the Holy Spirit to just shine through our lives this afternoon. So I'm excited, man. I believe the captives are going to be set free. The Word of God will be preached and the Word will break the chains that have had people in bondage all these years. For greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. Thank you. Amen, hey amen, hey that's good, that's good. You know, standing out here, you could probably hear the music in the background. You know, you can hear uh, the Mexican music right down, maybe about a few houses down, and uh, pretty soon we'll probably be smelling the food, you know? <laughs> I think that man plays the music for the whole neighborhood, brother. It sounds it's pretty like loud, that. isn't it? <laughs> that's so true, that's yeah. so true. Mariachi's you know, on Sunday <laughs> afternoon. And carnitas in the air. Yes. You know, so as Robert's saying, you know, this is exciting times because see what we're doing here is uh, this is actually what churches need to do. You know, this is a very small church, but yet that's how the church started, you know, and it started small. But yet, you know what, uh, we're looking for today to uh, men and women to stand up for the cause for Jesus, you know, go out there into these neighborhoods that are actually, you know, where we're at. You know, you can say again that this is a... Uh, 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 a leper's colony in a sense when you look at it because you know there's a lot of uh, gang activity goes on here uh, we hear that there's a lot of drugs uh, it's an infested area so but the thing is is that we believe that God's gonna do something here today just like my brother said so in a little bit we're gonna be talking to the bishop here hey, amen why don't we just go in there to see him right now man brother, with brother, the fire all up in his bones <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bishop, Praise we the Lord. Uh, want to hear a few words here. How long, you know, you've been in this church? Uh, you know, what's happening in this community, man? Well, praise God. I'm Bishop James A. Taylor, Sr. Amen. Here, pastor of uh, Freedom Missionary Baptist Church and also the presiding, uh, system presiding bishop of the International Northern Ministries of Jesus Christ is, uh, here in California. Amen. We're about to start a... Uh, 
district number two of the uh, International Northern Ministries on, on this coming Friday night in Norwalk. And uh, I've been here at this church uh, for about 12 years. And uh, the church is 50 years old and the Lord has blessed us tremendously when we've been, since we've been here. We're about reaching out into the community to uh, save the lost at any cost. Amen. Amen. We love people and uh, we reach out. Uh, we have no respect of person. Uh, although we are a uh, uh, Baptist denomination, or we, we are interdenominational in Christ. We, we are Christians loving all peoples and we don't, we're not tied up by denomination. We're tied up by our relationship with the Lord Jesus. So we're just happy to have you here today. Amen. And you know, we're, we're yeah. thankful to be invited here, you know, yeah, and, uh, to well. be here in the midst of the trenches, you know what yeah, I mean? And, and, yeah, And about yeah. the Father's business, amen? Yeah, yeah, amen. yeah. Well, praise God. This is the hood. <laughs> yes, yes. But it's, it's the like hood. they say, this That's is right. the hood, but, it, you know, God is good in the God hood. God is good in the hood. Amen. So we're keeping it good yes, in the hood. That's right. That's what we're doing. Amen. 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 Hello there. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here at Freedom Baptist Church in South Central. And right here on my left is a talented man that uh, I've had the privilege of um, hearing him speak and play his musical instruments. And uh, his name is um, Brother Nickelberry. And Brother, would you just, in just a few minutes, kind of just share a little bit how the Lord drew you to himself and has raised up you to use your talents that he's given you to reach folks and just how the Lord has put a burden on your heart for the Nickelberry. Amen. <laughs> That's a deep question. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. I was born and raised in the streets uh -huh. of New York, um, cities like the Bronx, um, then later on Freeport, Nassau County, New York. Then later on I moved to California, um, right in the heart of Compton, where I finished high school and um, endeavor to you know just just try to be a man and try to fit in my my place of um, you know what I was supposed to do as as being a man father husband and so um, the Lord saved me he called me I was already in the streets of Compton um, and I was going to a local church in Compton where you know a friend of mine just kept on telling me and, and trying to encourage me to come to the house of God, you know, before I got saved, but it was because of God using him as a mighty instrument. Uh, it was on a Halloween night, matter of fact, you know, it was a Halloween night. I decided to come to uh, this church in Compton, and that's when the Lord really saved me. I mean, really saved me. It was on a Halloween night, and from that night forward, I went home. Uh, and I started preaching to my godmother and my family. I said, you know, the Lord did a bit powerful work in me. I started reading my Bible. How and, old uh, were you about that time? Uh, uh, it was uh, like 20. I was in my early 20s. Oh, great. 21. Great. Um, and so, been on fire ever since, you know. And the Lord has been really dealing with me. And he put a burden on me for the streets. And uh, I didn't know at the time, but... You know, it's the reason why we go through what we go through because the Lord is preparing us and training us for such a time as whatever he wants us to do. So I was brought up in the streets. I seen a little bit of everything. I had experience. I, I did, you know, what, um, you know, we do before we get saved. And so, but when the Lord saved me on that Halloween night, it's been a powerful journey ever since, you know. I believe that uh, God is using you in a mighty way, brother, because you have a reputation out there. Uh, people know that you're about reaching uh, the hardcore lifestyles. Yes. You're, I've seen you at Rialto in the Inland Empire, and I've heard you've been out here in L.A. You've been out here at Nickerson Gardens. You've yes. been different parts, Whittier, um, reaching out to diverse ethnic communities, Latinos, Blacks, Asians, whatever it may be. And, and brother, I just commend you for for that yeah, and, and just encourage you just to keep pressing on yes. because um, 
that's your calling that God yes. has in your life. And I too had a fellow that uh, yes. was persistent in leading me to the Lord, so right. I can relate to that. I was right. a little bit older than you. I right. was 30, and uh, but but I know the love that um, that that person put on you and yes. I know that that was his mission from God yes. was to touch your life and there's a lot of those people you know that are right there in the middle that that they know the Lord and and there's somebody that God is going to use them to witness to and and just to be that um, that that actual contact or that that chain that'll link that person to the cross, lead that Amen. person to Christ. Yes. And and so when you mentioned about that friend of yours yes. back when you were 20 years old there in Compton, it, it clicked back. Uh, yes. uh, Pastor Lee Rodriguez in my life, how what, he was reaching out to me when I didn't know what was ailing me. I, I thought it was something I needed like more money, um, uh, more m material goods, uh, or, or more liquor, more cocaine or whatever it was that always seemed to kind of feel the need temporarily yes. little did I know it was it was the gospel message <laughs> yes. you know yes. which which it was but um, uh, tonight brother you're um, you're gonna be ministering in song and in word both or what do you plan for this evening well whatever whatever Lord says you know we're always ready to be used by him uh, tonight I'm accompanied by some mighty men of God, of course you well know. Um, we have men coming from different parts of California, you know, and uh, we expect for God to really show up tonight and really minister to the people who is going to come to hear this word. And it's all about outreach. We want to uh, let the people know that it's more than just having a first aid kit or a band-aid, but we have tools available to reach the root of the problem and to dig up the root. And uh, we have uh, resources here for people to get help and to, um, you know, advance and having a quality of life. You know, so that's what this service is all about. It's one of many. Just like you mentioned, we had a powerful service in Nickerson Gardens. It started way before then, and we have some dates already to continue this powerful work in the, in the near future. So we just praise God for what he's doing because he's, he's doing something really big. Awesome. Awesome. I'm uh, excited to be here today. Um, Rayford Johnson, the man that is using the camera right now, and this is the actual founder of ThugExposed.org. Uh, I, I want to just um, read a passage to you here real quickly, uh, and I'll try to make this quick so we can kind of move on here. But uh, in, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse, uh, starting with verse 5, if you have a Bible there, you can look at it and highlight it if you got a highlighter or a pencil to underline it. Um, but the word opens up here with a command to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do and He will direct your paths. Uh, don't impressed with your own wisdom. Mm. Instead, mm. fear the Lord and turn your back on evil. Mm -hmm. Then you will gain renewed health mm. and vitality. Mm. Um, you know, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm wearing something here that as you folks out there I know can read it. It says chaplain. Mm. And, and you wonder, well, chaplain, where are you chaplain at? I'm a chaplain at a county jail in San Bernardino County, the big jail, West Valley Detention. But just a little bit here, um, I've been there for about 10 years working with maximum security inmates, men that are looking at third strike charges, you know, striking out, going to prison for 30 years to life. And, and my, my own life, I, I didn't come from that way of life. And my, I was raised in, in uh, a Catholic home. 
Uh, went to Catholic school from third grade all the way to high school. I was indoctrinated into that type of life. I was an altar boy working in the church as a young boy. And uh, I thought that I was good enough at the age of 30 to make it to heaven if that would be the situation just because I had I had grown up hearing about it, and I didn't live a Christian life mm. by any means. I quit going to church when I was about seven, sixteen years old, and from there on, I, I lived the way of the world. Uh, my 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 passion was to get rich. Mm. That was my God, the God of the worldly wealth. Mm. I was deceived. I was believing a lie, mm. and and I was. Working my ways up, God had uh, um, blessed me with parents that that were very much entrepreneurial-minded people. They want, you know, they wanted me to get in my own business and get started, and and you know, you're not working for anybody else, son. Go out there and uh, you know, find a way through there, and and God made a way for that to happen. I I. I at the age of 18 years old, I started my own trenching business. Mm. Still to this day, I'm 54. Some of you guys can do the math. That's 36 years. Mm. 36 years later, I'm still in the business mm. uh, uh, with my trenching business. But, but what happened in 1987 mm. would turn my life completely around. Mm. I was trying to find peace mm. and joy in my life with... Um, you know, not being married, I was running around and and uh, I was using alcohol and and cocaine and I never felt that I was addicted to any of those things because my first addiction was work. I was I was a workaholic before I was a drugaholic or an alcoholic. I was busy about my business because remember I was serving the God of this world in his wealth, which is no other than Satan himself. Amen. And and I didn't know this until um, in 1987, January 24th. Uh, 1985, a year and a half before that, I married a lovely lady uh, named Rachel that uh, I had met. And uh, praise God, 26 years. This coming uh, Wednesday will be our anniversary. And uh, we're still together, praise God. And uh, it's only by, by the Word of God by the love of Jesus Christ that I can stand here before you and tell you that because in January 1987 our little girl um, she was just born that day January 24th her name was Brittany uh, she was born about 5.30 in the morning just a beautiful baby seven and a half pounds I held her right after birth and I was there when she was delivered. Now we already have one little girl, Brooke Ashley, at home. Brooke Ashley today is 25 years old. Um, and uh, But Brittany, um, God would have a different plan for Brittany. Uh, Brittany would, would be with us only for about 12 hours. And then God would call Brittany's soul up to the heavens. And, and Brittany would leave us. And, and God, in his infinite wisdom, knew how to reach somebody like me. And, and I, was, I was broken. I did not have a clue as to what was going on. All I knew was that she was a live little girl that morning. And when I went back, that afternoon, my wife called me. Rachel called me from the hospital, and she says, "Come, come quickly." She says, "They say our baby isn't going to live." By the time I got there to the hospital, I walked into the hospital and I looked at the nurses, and they looked at me, and I could tell they recognized who I was, and and they asked me, "Are you Mr. Jimenez?" And I said, "Yes, I am." And they said, "We have sorrow and sad news for you. Your little Brittany did not make it." And and then the doctor 
A few minutes later would bring Brittany out. Brittany would come out and she would be in the doctor's hands and she, she still had that little beanie that they put on the newborns, you know. But her body had, had, had turned blue already. Life was taken out of her, but this doctor wanted me just to hold her. I guess it was a way that, of um, releasing with your loved ones. And, and so I held Brittany in my arms, you know, but the life was gone out of her. And I, I gave Brittany back to... Uh, to the to the doctor and and I weeped and I weeped and 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 God was doing a work in my life my up to this point my marriage was very rocky mm -hmm. I was still drinking and partying and 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 I didn't have the respect for my wife that a, a husband should have mm -hmm. and and God was about to do a work in Robert Jimenez's life and mm. and and anyone around me and um, I that after that I, I was wondering you know being raised a Catholic I heard that the nurses had baptized the baby after they had already found the baby cyanotic and and basically uh, they baptized the dead baby well I was curious and and I wanted to know where my baby was and I had a friend that I used to go discoing with back in the 70s and I knew he had become a Christian and his name was Lee and I knew that he was serving God and I I was just wanting him to call me well sure enough he heard about it he called me and over the telephone I told him what went on and how Brittany was gone and where was she they baptized him and he told me some scriptures that Jesus said let the children come unto me for unless you become like one of them you by no means can enter into the kingdom of God and, and other scriptures that confirmed that Brittany was alright but he said Robbie a lot of people that know me for a long time they call me Robbie because they called me Robbie growing up and, and, and he says Robbie you're the one that needs to get your life right with God and I said well I'm not a bad man I, I, I've never killed nobody I, I, I don't, I've never you know gone out and robbed a big store or anything like that I've never hurt people physically bad or anything I'm an alright kind of guy uh, I imagine God would be okay with me he says Robbie he says the Bible says that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and then he said Robbie he says it also says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death and but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And, and I'm listening. And I, this is kind of moving me a little bit. But then he says, you're the one that needs to get right, Robert. And, and I said, well, what, how do we do that? He says, oh, he says, you got to say a prayer. And I, I just wanted to get him off the phone. But, but I went ahead and I said that prayer. And I said, hey, there's no lightning bolts. Nothing really has changed. And he says, he says, Robbie, he says, if you prayed that and you, you believed it in your heart, just as Romans um, 10, 9 says, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God the Father raised him from the dead on the third day, thou shalt be saved. And, 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 and so I said, okay. And, and I went into the shower that night. And in that shower, I cried out to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord met me in that shower. The power of the Holy Spirit was there. And I was converted. I was a new man in Christ. I was a baby Christian. And, and, and I began a new life. And that was 24 years ago. After that, the Lord blessed us with two other little girls. Um, uh, Brianna Marie and uh, Bianca Michelle. And so we would have uh, three girls now. And, and I love how you have these little girls here in the church because uh, I was dragging my little girls to church all the time. And my little girls now are big girls, 25, 20, yeah. 22, and 21. Yeah. And they all fear God. Yeah. Praise God. You know, I, I once heard a, a mighty man of God preaching. And he says, you know, he says what? He says, um, when I was a young kid, I had a drug problem. And I looked out and said, man, that man preaches real good for a guy that had a drug problem. And he says, yeah, he says, every Sunday morning and every Wednesday night, my mother would drag me to church. Yeah. And you know, he says, I have had a drug problem. So he was getting dragged to church. Well, brothers, 
I don't want to be too long here. My uh, through that, you know, God has blessed my years, and um, and He introduced me to prisons uh, 20 years ago uh, with champions, Bill Glass Champions for Life, and for the past uh, 10 years, I've had the privilege of being a, a volunteer chaplain at West Valley Detention, mm-hmm. and um, and so. You know, when it said, trust in the Lord with all your heart, do not depend on your own understanding. My understanding, what good would I be in a prison? I've never lived that life. I've never lived the gang life. I've never lived the outlaw type life. Uh, you know, what What? What do I have to impart to them? That's the way man thinks. But see, God has a higher plan and a better yeah. plan. So the thing is, I had to trust in the Lord. Mm. When you become a Christian, you need to trust in the Lord yes. and know that He's able to do something mm. in your life that you could never do. Yes. And and don't be impressed with your own wisdom, with your own thinking. Yes. Think about Him. There is nothing you could possibly do mm. to impress God. Yes. I mean, you just, there's nothing you can do. It was all done with Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can impress anyone. And that's Jesus. Last night I was sitting at a, at a concert and there was a man there, a, J- a Japanese man sitting next to me. And we got to talking and I said, hey, are you a Christian? And he said, he says, oh, no. He says, he says, I'm a Buddhist. And, and I said, oh, I guess that's why God put us here. And jokingly, he looked at me and, and you know, he kind of said, yeah, he goes, I guess, um, I guess Jesus and Buddha are probably buddies, you know. And in my spirit, you know, I try to keep a, a good, good talk, but in my spirit, I was thinking, but no, 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 you got a misunderstanding, my friend. I do not think they're, they're, they're buddies. I don't think Buddha and Jesus are hanging out together. No, I don't think so. So then I, I, the Holy Spirit's kind of, kind of said, say something to him about me. And so I just told him, I said, you know, my friend, I said, there's a lot of religions out there in the world. Mm. Mm-hmm. Many. And there's, there's only something very different about Christianity. Mm. Mm. And, and something very common about all the other ones. Mm. The other ones, mm. the people on earth, sinful people, mm. sinners, are all trying to reach God. Mm. But in Christianity... Mm. God came down to the earth to save all man. All of us. There ain't nothing we can do on our own. It's all got to be dependent on Him. So you need to seek His will in all that you do, and He will direct your paths. I thank you for your time. I know that uh, this Thug Exposed ministry is, is going to reach in to the minds mm. of, of young people. Mm. And, and it's going to produce fruit. Mm. That our labor is not in vain. Mm. Brother Junior, Brother Scott here, and a, a several other us, you know, and Brother Rayford, and what they're doing up in Sacramento. Mm. Um, it's going to take a while. Mm. But soon you will see the fruit mm. of what the Lord is doing if we just stay about it. And as it says in the word, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And let's don't depend on our own understanding, but let's uh, let's just trust in Him. Thank you for your time. Amen. Brother Junior, now can I bring Scott up? Would you let me introduce him? I want to bring Mr. Scott Allen up. This man is, I've met over at Harvest in Riverside. We've had the pleasure of working in the jails together. Yeah. And uh, and now uh, he's heavily engaged here with Thug Exposed. Amen. And Brother Scott, just give him a little bit of what the Lord has given you. Amen. Amen. My name's Scott. I'm an alcoholic. All oh, right. Oh, wrong <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> wrong me. All right, Scott. Right. Right. I got 22 years, thank you. Amen. 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 Come on. Um, as Robert was saying, you know, we're involved with this ministry called Thug Exposed. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's a great ministry. I'm, I'm really behind it because he brings up the stuff that these kids don't know. When I was growing up, it was heavy metal. Yeah. <laughs> you know. 
That's what that's what our that's what our demonic influence was. Uh -huh. but, you know, Black Sabbath. Mm. Mm. Whatever. Mm. No, you know, um, Black Sabbath, Ted Nugent. No, mm. you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Hard metal, you know, heavy metal. That's what I was into. Mm. You know, and now this stuff thing is going on. And these kids don't know what's going on. We didn't know what's going on. These, some of these, these these guys, you know, they're up there. They got six 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 everywhere. They're they're blazing Satan. We're on a highway to hell, mm. right? Yeah. You heard, heard that song, right? They said, "I'm on a highway to hell," mm. and all my friends are going to be there too. Yeah, they are. <laughs> all right. So, but the thing is, this information they have here like, when I first came across it was I was I was like, wow. Because he goes into the to all the way back to where this thing started, okay? This stuff, you know, this this hip hop stuff, you know. Uh, so it's it's just a it's a great ministry. Uh, I personally, I was uh, I was raised by wolves. I ran muck. I, I never had really a stable family life. I was adopted, and I just ran muck my whole life. You know, that, that's what I did. I, I was I had three moms at one time mm. because I was adopted. So I had my adopted mom, my real mom, and my my stepmom. Mm. So I I was mommy happy. No. Mm. <laughs> but uh, you know, so that's 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 how I grew up. You know what I mean? I went to juvenile hall the first time when I was 11. And that was back in 1969, mm. and uh, those were runaway. But I was at that. That age, I was already stealing, breaking into houses, shoplifting, mm. doing all that stuff. You know, and I, I remember, I still remember the day I went to juvenile hall, which was a long time ago. This, this big brother was sitting there going, he's looking at this little, little white boy. He was, I mean, I was 11. He goes, mm. what are you doing here? Mm. My mommy put me here, I don't know. So, you know, and that was just, and it just went on from there. On and on and on and on. And eventually, of course, I was already dabbling a little bit, sniffing glue and doing this and doing that, you know, a little bit of weed, a little sniffing, uh, drinking, and this continued on the rest of my life till I was 30, mm. and I got saved. My Lord. Yes. And through all that, I got saved, right? Yeah. Never been, I'd never been inside a church. I had, I swear, I'd never been inside a church one time that whole time. My family, did, did, there was no church. Mm. They just... They, they were glad when I wasn't in the house. That's all I know. Okay. As long as he's gone, we're fine. You know? And, and I, ended up, I ended up going into the biker culture for a while. And if you, that didn't work out too good because I was so strung out by that time. They didn't even want really nothing to do with me. They're just like, you know. I was a wannabe biker then. I'm, I'm going to be an HA. You know? I'm going to be an angel. That was my goal in life. Right? So, but they're, they're like, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't, by that time, I couldn't even maintain anything. You know, I was already, I was such a bad alcoholic. I was a dry act too, but I was such a bad alcoholic that mm. I didn't, I was lose days at a time, two, three days at a time. But through all this, you know, God has, God, I, I believe that God brought me through all this because there's no reason that I should have lived through all that. My Lord. You know, there's no possible reason I should have lived through that. Um, and I, I just want to look at a scripture. I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 4 because I want to look at the works of the devil because, because he's a, he's a, a liar. Yeah. He's a murderer. Yeah. And the father of lies. Yeah. So I want to look at I want to look at Matthew chapter four and just look at his, some of his stuff. Just as we're, as we're here exposing stuff, I want to just take a look at this here. Okay. Hmm. Beginning in chapter four, verse one. Mm -hmm. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Tempted by the devil. Mm -hmm. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Mm -hmm. And now when the tempter came to, to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, by, by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. Mm. What is that? Did he ask him to commit suicide? Mm. Yeah. I believe so. That's my interpretation of it. Mm. So what else is he? He's a murderer, right? Yeah. So he's tempted 
Suicide is the work of the devil. Mm. Yes. He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you, bear you up. At least you dash your foot against a stone. Mm. So, Jesus, so Satan uses scripture, yeah. but he perverts it. Yeah. All these cults out here, every call out here is a perversion of the true gospel. Yeah. That's right. yeah. It's a counterfeit. It's a fake. Amen. Okay? Amen. So verse 7, Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. We do that sometimes, I think, though. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But Satan really tempted. You know, he tempted. He tempted. He tempts. Mm -hmm. He, he tests us all the time. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. In verse 8, he says, Again, the devil took him up on an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the word and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give it to you, and you will fall down and worship me. And there's the thing that the devil still wants today is to be worshipped. Yeah. That's what he wanted from the beginning. And that's why he was cast out of heaven because of pride and he wanted to be worshipped. And that's what he wants today. And this one right here, this one, this one got Robert, right? He said, took him up, he shoot him out, and gave him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said these things, I will all these things I will give to you, and you will fall down and worship me. Mm -hmm. You know, all these all these people up are worshiping money mm -hmm. and things, and these rock stars, Britney Spears. I'm just yeah. picking on her, I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mick Jagger, mm. you know, these people are, are multi-billionaires. Mm. You imagine if they don't ever get saved, they're going to, when they get to hell, they're going to realize what a fool they were. Yeah. Because yeah. I bet you they give every penny they got up to get out of that fiery furnace. Yeah. Yeah. And that outer darkness. Yeah. And that weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they would give up every penny they got. Yeah. But yeah. see here, the devil's he's a liar. Yeah. He's a liar. Yeah, yeah. And he said to them, All these things I will give you, and you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Amen? Amen. And that really is right there. Amen. So I just want to leave that with you guys tonight. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to be here and Amen. here tonight to talk to you, to you guys. And, mm. and I know this, um, this pastor, is, you know, as I told him earlier, I said, What an awesome thing. You know, this guy's down in the trenches. Now, we live in Everside. It's pretty bad, but I've been to Boyle Heights, and this is worse than this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This, this, is, this is where it's at. This is where we need to come into the leper colonies and, and, sna and snag the, these people out of Satan's grasp. That's right. Right? That's right. Because he, he's working hard. Yeah. But we can work harder. we got a mightier God than he ever thought about being. Yeah. So I just want to thank you guys for being here. I want to talk to you right now about the number one thing. You see... Uh, because when you find excuses, the first excuse came out of where? Out of the book of Genesis. Yeah. You know, Adam, when the woman though gave us me and gave it to me to eat. Today we want to talk to you about the manufacturing excuses that are put in people's lives. Why they can't serve in ministry. I heard a young lady talking about, hey, the ministry that she's involved in. I heard other people bring out that they were going into the jails. I, I attend a big church, you know what I mean? And most big churches that are mega churches, you'll find that there's plenty of people to go out there and get involved in ministry. But what happens is when you really look down to it, this is the amount that you have there that are working in ministry. Okay? So... You know, and the real truth is they didn't really have any excuse. None of these excuses that these men use to themselves, they didn't really have any. But the Word of God states that there is nothing new under the sun. And we know that, right? If there's nothing new under the sun, the drunkard, the libertine, the businessman, the tax collector, or may I say the gangster. May I say the gangster, the member or the harlot. Yeah. All of them had excuses. Yeah. All of them had excuses. Now, if we were to take God at his word, okay, mm. about these excuses in every, in, step, in, in every step that every man would take, that God would sweep everyone into his grave who had an excuse. And most likely, the streets out here in Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Riverside, Boston, New York, wherever you might say, or Chicago, there would be hardly anybody in church next week, don't you think? Yes. So when we look at that and we talk about these things, you know what? I, I, I really pondered a lot of these thoughts in my head, in my mind, you know, when I thought about all of these things. Because see, 
There was not an excuse that was not a lie. And if the sinner had not made one, guess what? Yet the devil was there to whisper one. Yeah. Tonight, yeah. you know, I want to let you know the first excuse that was mentioned was of the man who was invited and bought the piece of ground. What was that? If you really study the word of God, you begin to see that, hey, what man does go out there and buy property without looking at it first? Yeah. You know? And then we look at the second man that he was out there and he talked about the oxen that he had to prove them, test them, okay? What man is going to go out there and buy oxen without testing them? Okay? And then we go look at the third guy. This is the worst. <laughs> he said he married a wife and could not come. Why didn't he bring her with him? She would have probably enjoyed the meal and he would have had a better time than to hear that all night long. You know what I mean? So, you know, you, you think about those things, you know what I mean? The excuses. And you know what? Most of the things that we look at today, many fellows today don't bring their wives for the simple fact that the relationships that they're in are unevenly yoked. Yeah, you know? Right. Yeah. They're unevenly yoked for the simple reason is that they find that themselves were too in a hurry to get out there. You find people today that are online looking for a wife and they're a Christian. Yeah. You know? If you gotta go online to look for a wife, man, you got trouble. Yeah. I, I, I kind of wonder if you really do know God. Yeah. You know? And here, you know what? If the veil was removed from their minds, they would understand the will of God mm. and she would enjoy life as well as he would. Mm. Okay? But there's a veil that's over the people's lives tonight, and we're gonna explore that place tonight. We're gonna let you in on a few things tonight. People say that they can't believe the Bible, that it's mysterious. It's too hard. Mm. Skeptics say that they, they don't believe in the Bible. Why? Because they haven't read it. Mm. Okay? Mm. If everybody could understand everything in the Bible, it would be simple. They would say, yes, we understand it. But you know what? Let me ask you something. How many of you have picked up the Word of God and understood it from day one? Mm. I didn't. No. I used to wonder about my neighbor every time I was incarcerated and I would come out and I would see this guy going to church, coming back. I would get busted, and go do some more time, come out, get it older. There he goes again. Same book in his hand and he's walking, getting into the car. And I said, man, I read a book that was thicker than that and I got tired of it in jail. Mm. What does this guy find in that same little book? Mm. What does he find? Mm. Well, you know that there's life. In the word of God. Yes. And tonight, you know what? When we really look at the children too when they go to school. What child is going to learn the first day the alphabets out in school? You know, uh, uh, arithmetic. No. They're not going to learn that. Does that mean that the school is bad? Mm. No, it don't. Mm. Well, today I want to read to you something here. Mm. And you know what? And these things that I'm going to read to you. This was written out there. And this is on the tombs of New York. And it's over the door and it says, The way of the transgressor is hard. And God's yoke is easy. His burden is light. And you know what? Ask the prisoners, right? Mm. Mm. Ask the people that know the Lord. Today we want to tell you, the moment the sinner takes this into the heart, something happens. Yeah. You know? But you first must turn away from your sins. Mm. You know, you first must acknowledge you need God. Mm. You know? And this is the thing that we come to tell you today. I want to read to you something that I ran into the other day. One century ago, I heard of a Swedish chemist who invented dynamite and became one of the richest persons before he died. However, he became very concerned that dynamite would be used in wars. Since this was not his intention, he formulated a plan to encourage peace. And so he established a fund about nine million and and stipulated that the interest on the fund was to be used to award annual prices for people who promote a peace all around the nations. Mm. The scientist was Alfred Bernard Noble, who died 1886, and the prize he established was known as the Nobel Prize. Mm. But the world seeks peace with promotion. Yeah. Only man has defined failure today as we look, hear, listen to the, about the rumors of wars. And those, rum, those are not rumors any longer. They have become shouts from the rooftops. 
earthquakes and tsunamis are number one hits in the film industries today of Hollywood. But no one wants to talk about the thousands of gallons of radiation that's spilling into our oceans. Economists. When you look about the economists and the people in our governments, they have drifted ashore, drowned out, and they're exhausted by the rough seas of life. Mm. And all have come to the shortness of the glory of God. Mm. And yet, guess what? They have no answers. No. But who knows where the answer is today? Yeah. It's in Jesus Christ yeah. as Lord and Savior. Yeah. You know, when we look at that, I know of a different feller. Mm. One who wrote three-thirds of the New Testament. Uh -huh. And I'm going to go there real quick. And let's yeah. go to Acts chapter mm -hmm. 19, mm -hmm. verse 11. <laughs> All right. The miracles that glorify Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his mm -hmm. body to the sick. And the disease left them and the evil spirits went out. The sister yeah. that was here talking about earlier had one of those rags mm -hmm. of little shirts in her hand. Yeah. And we see that. Yeah. You know, and I'm letting you know today that God works in that way that He would work through people yeah. and raise up. You must, in order to know God, you must be dead first before yeah. you become alive. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So then some of the inerrant Jews, Jewish exorcists, took it upon themselves to call on the name of the Lord Jesus mm. over those who had evil spirits, saying, mm. We exorcise you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Mm. Mm. We heard a lot about that tonight. Mm -hmm. you know? Warlocks, witches. We hear a lot about satanic movement throughout all the areas of our lives and our family. And that, hey, we got what's called furanderas in the family culture of the Hispanics. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to Mexico, you go to different places, and you got it all set up. There's shrines, everything going on. Mm. But here we got to see that here. Also, there were seven sons of seven, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Who are you? Yes. Hmm. But the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This became known to all, both to the Jews and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell over them. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified at that time. So, if the spirits, it didn't say that they were killed. It said that they left. Where did they go? Mm. You know, today we're going to talk about where these spirits go. Where they came from. Where, where this kind of mentality that we, we look at today and we see. You know, law enforcement in a sense looks at it in the sense that it's just the thug in the street. It's the gang member, but you know what? I'm here to tell you that that, that mentality, rules and rhymes was in, in the law enforcement, mm. and in our governments, uh -huh. in our teachers, everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, everywhere. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We need to identify it. And today, through the canon of scripture, we're letting you know more and more about it just in a minute. Bear with me right here as I go into this verse. Mm -hmm. 17. This became known both to all Jews, Greeks, dwelling in Ephesus, and the fear of the Lord came over all. And the name of Jesus was magnified, and many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. You know, today we're going to be talking about that because what happened back then in that church in Ephesus can happen here in this community. Yeah. You want that to happen? It's going to take just a handful because that's the way God works. Mm. If not, guess what? We would think that would be our glory. Yeah. We, we could take the credit, but the glory goes to God. Yeah. And before I bring my brother Rayford up here so he can give you some of that inclination so you can connect on that, I want to just close with this. The preacher's the preacher in chains. Okay? Yes. Every preacher that gets up here, every preacher that stands on a corner, every preacher that goes into a prison, mm. 
They're all looked at as if they have chains on them. I don't want to be caught up in ministry. Look at that, man. He's got to be there all these days. He's out there doing this. He's got to do that. Those are chains. But you know what? Let me tell you about a man that carried chains. Real chains. And this man, the Bible, when you study him, a Paul Apostle that was speaking there earlier, this man, when they moved him around, they moved him from with chains. And not just one set, but there was two or three of them because the soldiers were so drunk. Yeah. That they lost the key. So they take out the sword and bust the chain mm. and take them to another location. Mm. Here, right now, we're going to hear about it. In Acts 26 29, the word of God reads like this mm. I would to God that not only you, mm. but also all who hear me today, tonight, mm. become both, almost, and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. That's right. Mm. The trumpet sounded and the royal guests entered, dressed in brightly colored robes, adorned with gold, silver, and precious stones. Mm. The soldiers' weapons glistened in the sunlight as the king took his place on the throne and all bowed to him. Mm. In front of this group of important people stood a small-aged prisoner in worn clothes. Mm. There were shackles on his feet. And his right arm was chained to the arm of a soldier. It was evident that he had suffered provision. Provision. But his face showed that he had an inner peace. Mm -hmm. The king on the throne was Herod Agrippa II. Yeah. The last of the Herod. 16 years earlier, his father had killed the disciple James. Mm -hmm. Before that, his great uncle had killed John the Baptist and mocked Jesus. And his great-grandfather has slaughtered the children at birth of Christ. In reply to Agrippa's statement, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. In Acts 26, 28, Paul made his last appeal, which is our text for today. The wicked king had been deeply affected by Paul's conversional story and personal plea. And for a moment, he even considered becoming a Christian. Paul's reply to Agrippa is one of the most beautiful statements in Scripture. The love of Paul stands in sharp contrast to the lust of Agrippa, Bernice, and Festus. He prays not only that would that they would have accepted Christ, but that everyone in the courtroom would choose eternal yeah. life. Now, yeah. eternal life is promised to everyone, but it's yeah. up to you to decide where you're going to spend. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you know, when I think about that, what were the things that held this man back when he said, I was almost persuaded? Mm. Number one, you look at Bernice. It was the lust for women. Mm. Mm. And he had her by his side. Mm. The first one, we see that. The next one is Festus. Festus. He had a friend that stood by him that he claimed to be a friend. But after they gave him the word and Paul said hey this is what the way it should be if you believe mm. and Festus was quick to tell him hey no oh, no how many people are out there that we have that as soon as they leave church there's a Festus out there yeah letting them know no man you don't need that but you know the greatest enemy that we would see here was Agrippa himself mm. because he chose to sit on the throne of power yeah you know when we choose to sit there and claim that we have the power to change things. Mm -hmm. We'll sit there till we die. Yeah. You know? I ask you today, as we go into this thug exposed a little deeper today, to evaluate your life. Are you willing to go forth and understand that this is spiritual warfare? Mm -hmm. Father, we just thank you so much. There's no name above your name. Wouldn't serve any other name. Yeah, sure, Mashiach. There's power in the name. There's victory in the name. There's healing in the name. Healing. Anointing in the name. Yes. There is peace in the name. If you would speak aloud. Every knee. Every time.
so much healing. Bless your name. Yeshua. Yeshua. We bless, we bless your, your name.